my mouth. So, Rashad, your thoughts when the Dolphins drafted Mayco Fitzpatrick and um, he's been making plays. He's been getting hand on balls early. Um, I think it was a good pickup. Um, I think he, he he definitely will help us. Uh, I'm glad we got another DV, another guy in the room. The, uh, one thing that's been tossed around is the idea of free safeties on the field at times. Obviously, we saw that a little bit when Mo Smith played before the appendectomy last year. What could a package of you, TJ, and Minka do? What what strengths would, would that bring? Um, I think we all versatile safeties. Um, I know I can play strong safety, free safety. Um, I, I guess it give us an extra uh, element of coverage. You know, we got two strong defensive ends right now that's going to get after the quarterback. Uh, I know with Mika on the field and all three of us on the field, um, like I said, I, give us, I guess it give us that extra lockdown coverage. We haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen Raquan McMillan playing a game yet. Um, what do you think his strengths will be in front of you guys? Um, I think it'd be good. You know, we're calling a big body. Um, He's been very vocal out there, uh, taking on that that leadership uh, middle linebacker role. Um, I think I think he'll be very, I think he'll be very good, and he, he'll be helpful for us this year. You see any signs with uh, Xavier Howard that he's progressing, that he's maturing and moving into kind of that veteran status at all? Um, X is big X, man. You know he's he's getting after it. Uh, I think we all have a common goal right now: just come out here and get one percent better. You know, like our coach preach, um, and I think he's doing that. He's he, I think he's had a small injury. He's working. He's working through that, and he's out trying to trying to make plays for us. Do you see things uh, improving though? Do you see certain things that he's approaching differently, or he doesn't? He doesn't seem like a rookie anymore to you. Um, I think he's he's getting more knowledge of the game for us. You know, seeing split, seeing seeing things a little bit different. He is recognizing formations and different things like that. So, um, I would say yeah. I think, yeah. Um, you had your thirtieth birthday not long ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. What does, that, what does that mean to you uh, in terms of being a professional athlete and turning 30 and where, where you feel you are in your career? I still feel 18, man. I still feel I got a lot of ball left um, left ahead of me. Uh, I still feel good. Uh, I mean, I don't feel 30. <laughs> so, I mean. <laughs> this might make you feel old, too. This is your ninth season? Yep. Is that hard to believe? Yeah, it is a little hard to believe. It is. Uh, I mean, you got into the league as a player, obviously you want to provide for your family and play at a high level, but you want to win too. The frustration of not really getting to that point. You made the playoffs obviously once, but being a competitor year in, year out, does that kind of eat at you a little bit? A little bit, but I just control what I control, man. I do. I come and, and work my butt off and do everything I can to help this team win, and whatever happens, happens. What gives you confidence that this year will be different than in years past? Um... I mean, we don't know. It's early, you know. Um, I can't really tell right now, but uh, I feel like we got the right guys in the locker room. Um, there's been a lot of change around here. Uh, the culture feel, feels a little bit different, feel better, you know what I mean? And um, I, I just think we're heading in the right direction. How would you describe the personality and the leadership style of the new secondary coach? Um, Tony's a great dude, man. He's a family guy. He cares about, you can tell he cares about us, you know, not only. Um, on the field, but off the field too. You know, he he, he asks about your family members and different things like that. So uh, it's fun being around um, with a guy like that who he he's been around also. He knows football. He knows the game, and um, I think he'll be very helpful for for the young guys this year in uh, in our room. In terms of how he and Coach Lou teach technique, is it? Uh, can you sense yet? I know it's early. Is there a big difference in, in how they teach technique? Um, not really for us. I mean, everything pretty much the same for the safeties. Uh, a cornerback can probably tell you a little bit different. Um, he worked with the corners a little bit more than he worked with us. But um, like I said, he's he, he's a family guy. He's he, we have fun in the room. Um, he he got very he, he got a lot of knowledge of the game. He's been on Super Bowl teams. Um, so I mean, he know he know what it looks like and how to get it done. Rashad, how would you assess how you and TJ play as a tandem once he came back, and where is the room? Um, me and TJ play uh, together a little bit later. Uh, I'm excited to see, you know, early on what we can do. Um, like I said, I think me and TJ are interchangeable. Uh, we're both versatile safeties. I can play free. He can play free. I can play strong. He can play strong. So, I mean, I think it, it'll be exciting for us to see early on, you know, um, to have both of us on the field at the same time beginning of the season. What can help your secondary get more turnovers, produce more turnovers than last year's total of eight? Just tighten up coverage, man. Um, I think it's it's a total defense. D d d it's a total defensive effort, you know. Um, pass rush again to the quarterback. Um, we tighten up coverage, communicate a little bit better. Um, different things like that. What 
Well, Rashad, as Minka been picking your brain, and what would be some of the advice you would give him in his early days as a He hasn't really picked my brain too much. I've been kind of helping him on little things, but um, what advice I can give him is just be yourself. You know, do everything you've done to, to get you to this point. Just continue to be Mika, and um, I think he'll be fine. What was your It's about time. We have a draft of the safety, you know, in a while. You know what I mean? I, I think it was about time for us to get another defensive back in the room. So um, I didn't really have a, a reaction. I think I think it was helpful. I think it was it was a good move. How was Raekwon doing last uh, offseason? I mean, he's a rookie at that point, still pretty new. As far as just commanding the defense and running everything. Last year, you said? Yeah, last year when Raekwon was practicing with you guys. I, I really didn't pay attention to him too much last year. Um, I don't think we got as many reps together either last year, so I wasn't really paying attention to him like that. What's your reaction to the uh, NFL changing the way we do the national anthem? I really have no comment on it. I know in sports, whatever, you know, someone's traded, released, whatever, it's an next man up, but what kind of blows into the defense with Ndamukong and Sue not lining up there? Um, I'm going to miss him. You know, I think Ndamukong and Sue was a great guy, um, great friend. Um, a great talent on the field too. Um, he's a dominant force, you know. Uh, a guy like that that's leaving is going is going to definitely affect us a little bit. But I think uh, we got the right guys in our room and on this team that can step up and f fill that void. Knowing it's early, but your way too early impressions of Ryan Tannehill as he comes back from the injury. I mean, Ryan is a competitor, man. I've been seeing him work all season. You know, while we working, he's been here working. He's one of the first guys in the in the, in the building. Um, He's been looking good, you know. He's been making all the right throws. He's been making plays out there, you know. what I mean, uh, I'm excited to have him back, you know, as our starting quarterback. Richard, I can remember a couple of years back when we talked about how much making the Pro Bowl would mean to you when you hadn't made it yet. Now that you have made it a couple of times, how, what sort of statement do you think you've made to the rest of the league? What do you think others in the league think of when they think of Rashad Jones? Um, it really don't matter. I know, like I always said, I, I know I'm one of the best safeties in this league. I know what I can do in this league. Um, all, I, all I'm here to do is continue to do whatever whatever it takes for this team to win games. Um, contract situation behind me, all those things behind me. Um, like I said, my main focus is, is, is to help this team win and, and, and be the best teammate and, and player I can be. Obviously, you've had an eight-year career here. Have you given any thought to finishing your career here and possibly being uh, most definitely. I, I definitely would like to retire Dolphin. I've been here nine years. Um, my family's here. You know, um, I, I don't want to go nowhere else now at this point. Nine years in, been with the same team. That's kind of rare, but I love to finish as a, as, a, as a Miami Dolphin. And what do you think you need to do to get that ring of honor kind of status? I really haven't looked at that. You know what I mean? Like I said, I just want to come out, be consistent, do what I've been doing, you know, and let everything else, all those honors and, and the recognition and accolades handle itself. It's so rare to see a player go his whole career with any, with any one team. Would that be kind of something you really cherish if you were able to pull that off? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like I said, I, I love to be here. You know what I mean? I love I love Miami. I love the fans. I love I love everything about it. You know what I mean? I was blessed to be able to be drafted to one of the teams I wanted to come to. So, um, like I said, I definitely want to end my career here if that's possible. All right. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Man, it was uh, it was hard at first, but then I uh, I kind of sucked it up and told myself that I could either let this year be a waste or prepare myself for next year because I know next year is going to be a rolling start and I can't be a uh, I can't have any setbacks. It was kind of a fluky as a fluke injuries, right? I mean, you run down a punt and you just collide with a teammate. Yeah, it was it was a little quick injury. Uh, I mean, everything happens for a reason, so I wouldn't call it fluke. But uh, yeah, I mean, got a little nudge. And uh, it happened, so took it from there. What's been the hardest part of the last nine months? Nah, the hardest part is uh, just getting back. You know, just baby steps. You know, every every day you're not gonna be not walking one day and then walking the next. You know what I'm saying? It was taking one step today, taking two steps the next day, 
and then eventually getting to full speed, you know what I'm saying? That's the hardest part is just a daily grind and you don't move as fast as you want to, but you're always moving. Obviously, you were focused on getting back last year, but was there any uh, football knowledge that you gained, anything that you can now apply to actual playing? Yeah, for sure, man. I, uh, I got to watch Chase Allen grow into the player he is not right now. You know, Chase did a great job coming in and uh, filling in the missing spot. You know, uh, just talking with him, he was kind of like my boy when we were coming in through camp, learning together. And uh, during the season, just watching him out there doing it while I'm still going to all the meetings, talking, it just helped me. Uh, it just helped my mental game. So now that I'm back out there, now I'm uh, still with the guys. And you can apply that knowledge to the stuff that. Yeah. yeah. Rick, well, obviously you're a young man inexperienced player, but you're going to be right in the middle of things. So how, as a young man, not a lot of game experience, do you be a leader? Uh, how do you do that? It, it all comes with confidence, knowing what I'm doing, uh, being able to tell guys what they're doing around me. And when they ask, have a definite answer, not like, oh, I don't know, let me go ask coach. Is uh, When they come to me as the Mike linebacker, I need to know. And uh, I mean, leader isn't just a, t a title that you get because you're the Mike linebacker. Leader is a title that you get because you put in the work day in and day out during the offseason and uh, leading up to now. So do you feel like this is sort of your quote-unquote working year, second year, a little bit in between? <laughs> yeah, I got like one and a half, I guess. <laughs> That's what you want to call it. So, yeah, this is my rookie and a half. <laughs> Was there a point in your rehab that you said to yourself, Uh, yeah, I mean, when I finally started doing regular stuff, you know, like going to top golf and going to swim and going out shoot a little basketball, when I knew it, when I knew I could do that, then I knew I was gonna be okay. How well was it going for you last year? Like how, how ready to take over the no linebacker spot were you before it was taken away? I mean, I was still a rookie last year, and I was still uh, being thrown into the water, thrown into the fire, but. I was very confident in myself and what I could do on the field. And I felt like I could have did big things last year, but it just had to wait until next year. You mentioned first off the, the, the Dolphins picked Jerome Baker. Like, were you watching it? Or did you hear about it? Or... I was actually in the movies when it happened. <laughs> I, I was tweeting from the movies. Everybody saw me tweeting, but I was in the movies. And people beside me were getting mad because I was on the phone the whole time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they drafted my boy, Bake. And uh, I mean, just. I recruited him to Ohio State, so it just kind of uh, feel good again to have him back with me here, so I can teach him a little bit what I know. You mentioned top golf and all that. When, when was that? When did you start to feel normal again? Uh, I have no idea. Like January, February. So it took the whole season for you to kind of get, get back, back to that point. Yeah, I mean, this, I, I say about December, January, February when I start feeling like myself again. When the injury first happened, did it cross your mind like this is crazy for it to be on the first play? Yeah, I mean, when I was on the ground, I was sitting there like, wow. I mean, I, I knew something was up as soon as it happened because I've never been hurt before. And, I, and when I jumped up to try to run again, if you go back and look at it, when I first fell, I jumped right back up and tried to run. But uh, it just didn't feel right and uh, sat back down. And I knew something was up. But it was like, man, it's crazy. Just first time touching the field, period. I'm uh, hurt. So, yeah, it was crazy. What are the skills that you saw from him going back to his Ohio State days that hint to you that he can help this defense? Man, uh, some some games that I played in the whip, you know, Oklahoma, at Oklahoma, uh, at Wisconsin, uh, he really played some some ball in those games, and uh, you know it wasn't a one man show out there. He he was out there playing ball, and when we played the team on North. He, uh, that's Michigan, but uh, he had, uh, I think he, I had like 19 tackles or something like that, and he had, he was right behind me with like 18, you know what I'm saying? And he was out there balling. And I, and from then on, I knew he had a chance. I thought, personally, I thought he was going to be early second round pick, but uh, I mean, some, they had circumstances last year at Ohio State that made him drop down a little bit, but he's definitely a good ball player. Rick, how do you see your role on this defense? Uh, man, I'm the Mike. I'm the middle linebacker. I'm the uh, guy in the middle, you know, the quarterback of the defense, and uh, you know, trying to become a leader out there. You know, it's nothing given to me, so I'm trying to work my way into that uh, leadership spot. Yeah, I mean, 
uh, bringing in young talent, you know, and they got to work to become that. You know, he's definitely one of the top 100 players in the league, as y'all saw uh, from Innova Network. He's been voted by the other players. Dominant force in the middle, and uh, we just got to bring in talent to uh, come do what he did. To what extent did you and Ryan go through this process together? And we got our surgery on the same exact day. <laughs> we got back here on the same day, and we started rehab the same exact day. And uh, from day one, it was always a competition. Uh, who could walk without our crutches first? Uh, who could run full speed underwater first? Uh, I mean, just little stuff. Who can get a bigger quad muscle? When we <laughs> I mean, just, just little stupid stuff like that, just to keep competing with each other. And uh, also, Isaiah Ford, too, was in that competition with us, even though he had a, a smaller injury. But we all kept it, kept it light on each other. Was going through it with Ryan helpful? Yeah, for sure, because he always kept me up when uh, some days, you know, I wasn't feeling too good. And uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. And he always kept me positive and kept my mind right because he had went through it last year. So, uh, yeah. So who, who won the competition? Was it a competition first? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he won. I, I won, but, <laughs> but I, I mean, I don't know. You, you know, Tannehill, he, he progressed a little bit faster than me. And... Uh, because he, he just knew what what the deal was with his knee. He wasn't scared of the pains and uh, aches and pains that come with it. And uh, he moved along and helped me move along as well. Were you scared of the aches and pains when you had them? Was I scared of them? Uh, yeah, but I got surgery for a reason. So <laughs> the, the surgery was so that I wouldn't have the aches and pains anymore. And, uh, you know, they went away eventually. That's good. Rick, what was the movie you saw on the draft night when Jerome was drafted? Uh, Black Panther. Hmm. Can, you, can you have no limitations now? <laughs> nah, no, no limitations. I'm out there on the field. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir.